Everyone and their mom knows about heroes from Greek mythology. There's tons of movies, TV shows, video games, books, and pretty much any kind of media you could think of about guys like Hercules. But a look at all that media, and you would think the Bible is just some lame book in comparison. But that's because, despite the presence of many heroes in the Bible too, no one really recognizes them as such. I mean, sure, you go to church, and any given Sunday, there's a preacher talking about Samson or Elijah, but it's never in the same context as Greek heroes are discussed. Everyone talks about the heroic journey those guys go on, the kind of powers and feats they display, while in contrast, biblical heroes are only ever brought up in reference to the life lessons and virtues their stories convey. Of course, I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I just think it's important to highlight that biblical heroes are just as cool. So put away your flopping superhero movies and underwhelming Percy Jackson remakes because today, I'll be creating a chronicle of biblical heroes. We'll talk about biblical heroes like the heroes they are and even compare them to their Greek counterparts. A huge landmark of heroes is just how iconic they are. Modern day superheroes like Superman and Batman have been iconic for well over 60 years. Superman had his first digital media with the adventures of Superman in the 50s while Batman had one of the most popular TV shows in the 60s, and they're both still headlining movies today. And you don't even have to just be a Marvel or DC original hero to get that treatment either. Hercules is easily the most iconic Greek hero. He was relevant across all Greek cultures, and even today, the guy has his own Disney movie. These heroes are not only popular to us, but are even more relevant in the context of their own stories. I mean, I can only imagine how much we'd revere a guy like Spider-Man given things like Cardi B stan accounts exist. Likewise, the Bible also has a couple iconic heroes. There's Jesus, who the whole book is basically about, and then there's also Moses, who just like Hercules, has his own animated movie too. But another guy who's just as relevant as these two is David, the man after God's own heart. David just might be the most popular and revered man in the Bible, but this is just one of the many things he excelled at. The guy spent pretty much his whole life without catching an L and he started off as just a humble little shepherd who watched over his father's sheep. And despite being just a scrawny little teenager, on multiple occasions David single handedly killed lions and bears to protect his father's sheep. His crazy feats as a teenager don't even stop there either cause this guy somehow also went one on one with Goliath, a 10 foot tall behemoth who was too intimidating for anyone in Israel's entire army to even think about fighting. And he won. Add all of this to his countless military victories for Israel, and it's no surprise this guy was bigger than Andrew Tate in 2022 down there. Of course, you can't talk about heroes without pointing out their extraordinary feats of strength. Incredible strength is usually necessary for many heroes, as they need nothing less than that to overcome the many challenges in this story. Like yeah, being brave is nice and all, but that's not gonna stop the 50 foot tall cracking and circling your ship. Of course, displaying that level of strength also leads to some of the most memorable parts of a story. Everyone remembers Aang going into the Avatar state against Ozai, and Hercules literally has his 12 labors which are basically just a highlight reel to show how amazing he is. Two good examples of biblical heroes with incredible feats are Moses and Samson. Moses started out in ancient Egypt as an Egyptian who was secretly born an Israelite. All this lasted until God summoned him to free the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and the Pharaoh refused to release them despite Moses asking. And man, if you thought Hercules' 12 labors were a highlight reel, boy do I have something to show you. To force the Pharaoh's hand, Moses unleashed 10 horrible plagues on Egypt. This meant Egypt had to deal with stuff like frog epidemics and drinking blood because Moses turned all the water in Egypt to blood. But by far the worst plague? was the death of every firstborn in Egypt. It didn't matter how rich, poor, young or old they were, every firstborn Egyptian died in one night. Oh, and it wasn't even just restricted to humans either, all firstborn animals and livestock died too. How's that for a highlight reel? Samson is also another guy whose whole life just screams insane feats. I mean, he's essentially a Hercules clone, so that should tell you all you need to know. Like Hercules, Samson also had ridiculous superhuman strength and here are a couple things he did with his. Samson ripped a lion in half, killed 30 people, carried 45 gates to the top of a hill, pulled down the pillars of a huge temple while being heavily weakened and blinded, and then he killed a thousand people in a single fight. Oh, with just a donkey's jawbone too. There's so much movement potential in this, I can't even. <laughs> okay, I know I was pretty thorough about how important strength was 
but being a hero is also pretty much impossible without an equally impressive character. As the kids will say today, you need that dog in you. Even for us regular people, we need a lot of mental fortitude to go through our regular daily life. And many times, the people who can conjure that up end up in even more unfortunate situations. The same thing goes for many other heroes. Aang had to overcome the grief of his people being extinct and his failures to uphold his duties as the Avatar. Spider-Man had to face Uncle Ben's death and how his actions led to it. This is probably the biggest way where we embody heroes ourselves and it's likely why I identify so much with the prophet Elijah from the Bible. This guy's my favorite person from the Bible because of just how much mental fortitude he had. Elijah was a prophet in Israel during the days of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel which had to be the worst time to be a prophet in Israel because that's when Ahab had all the prophets killed. All of them except Elijah that is. Elijah, fearing for his life, ran to the desert and obviously seeing all your closest colleagues die in front of you and having your best case scenario be potentially dying in the desert from either starvation, dehydration or a heat stroke made him pretty much depressed. So depressed in fact that he straight up asked God to kill him. Thankfully God didn't because despite these challenges, Elijah went ahead to orchestrate the royal family's downfall. He confronted the king and queen of Israel to call them out on worshipping a false god anointed the guys who would fight against Israel and then he even trained his own apprentice, Elisha. Oh, and instead of just dying like us regular people, the guy went up to heaven in a whole flaming chariot of fire. Like, I know every other video on this channel has me repeating that, but come on man, how could I not mention it? Many Greek heroes are demigods and while the bible doesn't exactly stack up to that, with most of the heroes being just regular humans, the one big exception is Jesus. But like with everything we've already covered in this video, there's a twist. You see, demigods are well, demi. They're half human and half god, so they don't usually have the divinity of a god. Instead, it just manifests as great powers, whether it be strength, wisdom, or invincibility. They're just clearly special compared to everyone else. But Jesus, however, really is God himself, while also being the son of God. It's a little complicated, but I like to think of it like Jesus being an avatar of God, created by God so he could directly interact with people on earth. He has the divinity of God and can do pretty much anything he wants to just like how God can, but he also still is human. I said God like 50 times in that last segment. Like I mentioned earlier, Jesus is the closest thing to a main character the Bible has and he did a bunch of cool stuff, some of which I covered in my Jesus is a Jojo video. So now we've seen just how similar heroes across the board could be, but there's just as many differences when you compare biblical heroes to Greek heroes. But what are these differences you ask? Well there's three in particular, namely their origins, character, and faith. Firstly we have their origins. Biblical heroes start are very toned down, they're usually just regular humans who could be born to just anyone. Sometimes their parents are even unnamed, that's how little their origin matters. The only thing that truly matters with biblical heroes is that at some point in their life, God chooses them. And being chosen happens at any point in life. It could be before even being born like Samson or as an old ass man like Noah. All that matters is being chosen. But what does being chosen even mean? Well, it's kinda like the part where you choose an ability in video games where you create characters. The only difference is, God does the choosing. Now most times, these guys don't even really have any special abilities. All they need is the balls to do whatever God asks them. Some other times though, God makes anything from Gandalf variants to Hercules clones. We see it with guys like Elijah or Samson, they're juiced up with some ridiculous powers to help them accomplish the mission, but the common theme is God being the source of their abilities. Greek heroes however are a lot different. While biblical heroes have fairly modest origins, many Greek heroes are usually just the opposite. Many of them are either demigods or children of some other divine being like a nymph or something. So their special abilities are mostly from the relation to whatever kind of divine parent they have. Ironically, despite having divine parents, Greek heroes end up being very human in terms of characters. They have many flaws which put them in bad situations, a common one being arrogance. Sometimes these heroes aren't even particularly moral characters or even good people. After all, Theseus was a rapist and kidnapper, Hercules killed his own wife and children, Odysseus killed a baby, and then there's Achilles who was a necrophile. That doesn't mean they were all evil through and through. Many stories of Greek heroes are about them killing tyrants and rescuing the helpless. It's just Greek heroes tend to have a wider variety in character. 
Biblical heroes on the other hand are pretty much spotless in comparison. Since they are chosen by God, there is usually a higher standard of character required of biblical heroes before they are qualified. So most of them turn out to be pretty dignified people. Of course, this isn't always the case. Gideon, a judge of Israel was a notorious bandit before God chose him, but like many other biblical heroes, he cleaned up his acts right after. Some biblical heroes who do end up doing morally questionable stuff even spend a while regretting their actions. David got one of his soldiers killed because he wanted to marry his wife, but later on he spends a whole chapter apologizing for this. Of course, the morals are defined by a code of conduct they follow, which is basically just God. Some biblical heroes were mass murderers, so they're not exactly spotless in the modern sense, but it was a doggy dog wall then and they were murderers for their God, so I'm grading with a pretty lenient curve over here. Finally, we have their faith. In Greek mythology, heroes often have their paths determined by prophecies or even divine mandates. From early on, their fates are set to either fulfill glorious destinies or face tragic ends. A popular example of this is the story of Oedipus. According to a prophecy, Oedipus was destined to kill his father and marry his mother, so in order to avoid this fate, he leaves his home. But what he doesn't know, however, is the parents he left were only just his adopted parents, and on his journey, he still ends up fulfilling his prophecy by killing his real father and marrying his biological mother. In comparison, biblical heroes have way more freedom in shaping their destinies. Rather than predetermined prophecies, their choices dictate the course of their lives. Moses, for instance, never reached the promised land due to his disobedience of God, and this was despite him being God's favorite person at the time. Biblical heroes often operate within the realm of God's will, and despite him imposing his will sometimes, God is a pretty big proponent of free will, so he lets his heroes choose their paths through their own actions. Of course, Greek heroes are not the only popular heroes. Superheroes and many other modern fictional heroes are also more relevant than biblical heroes, but I specified the Greek ones because like biblical heroes, they are also relatively ancient in comparison to most things today, but somehow, only Greek heroes and mythology still remains present in today's media. I also said a lot of heroes in that last segment. But that's the whole video, please check out the other videos on the channel, thank you, love you, bye.